Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Now, I know from having talked to a lot of clients who are in these early stages or their children are worried about them because they're in these early stages. The last thing they want to do is tell the doctor about this, <laughs> especially their regular, you know, their it's primary true. care physician, right? Among other things, because they're afraid that that's going to go in the chart, and they're afraid, oh my God, next thing I know, they're going to be pulling me out of my house, right? So I guess for people who are kind of stuck there, or for people who have parents are kind of, or a spouse that's kind of stuck there, is there somebody else you can talk to? I know we've talked. Well, we, 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 you can always, I mean, you can always contact the Alzheimer's Association mm -hmm. because they can help you to work through those issues. And my, my biggest push for folks is to get an early diagnosis because mm -hmm. there are so many things that can be done, whether it's medication, lifestyle, socialization, things in your life that can be done to lead a good quality life with the disease. Um, and knowing early there's a lot of things that the, even the doctors are trying on folks and, and yeah. um, with good results. So knowing is better than not knowing. Than not knowing. And I think it empowers the person, it empowers the caregiver because once you've got that diagnosis, there's plenty of places to get the support and to increase education and to yeah. know what you're, it's like learning you have diabetes and learning all about the insulin injections you have to take. If you just sit by and ignore it, it That's an excellent bad. parallel. That's yeah. an excellent parallel. Because I think, once again, for people who have Alzheimer's, just like you don't, you don't tend to think about Alzheimer's as being a disease. You, you, think, you tend to think of Alzheimer's as being kind of in some other category as opposed to things that are medically treatable, but it really is a disease. Right? And Monica and, and, had mentioned the personality. Right. And oftentimes with the development of early stage Alzheimer's, you'll see mood changes, you'll see personality changes, where family and friends might think, you know, what's going on with that person? Right. They're really changing as a person, and, when and, in and fact it's the, disease. it's the disease. Now, can you talk about that? Because you must, once again, you're seeing people in many cases that have early, early stages of this. Can you talk about what kinds of mood changes may make people concerned or cause people to be concerned about this or a should cause one, them to be concerned? A big one is irritability yeah. and agitation. This sound, um, keeps sounding like me. Whenever I, when I start doing this, I keep saying, God. So irritability and agitation. Yeah, and, and frustration. And the frustration comes from the person realizing that they're something's going on, something's, something's not wrong. right. So the person themselves, they may not want to admit to it, they may not want to talk about it, but they, they know something's happening. So oftentimes when someone feels this is coming on, they will become more isolated. They'll start canceling their social engagements, stop yeah. seeing friends and going to things. Now, can you, when you say that uh, there's a sense of frustration that you start seeing in them, people just get more edgy. Frustration over, for example, what? They can't remember. They, they can't, can't remember. remember. Uh, that would be one of the signs where they yeah. can't retrace their steps and yeah. find out, okay, where did I leave them? Now, are um, there any other, other kinds of tasks or things that would be parallel to that? Where, where you, um, you'd be things that you could do and all of a sudden you can't? Sure, paying bills. Um, you know, overpaying on a bill. Um, oftentimes we see in, in someone's, if they're living alone, mail yeah. starts to pile up. I Things see. get to be feeling overwhelming for them where I normally see. they could organize themselves enough to, to be on target yeah. with those types of tasks. Now in, 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 a, in these kinds of early stages, would you already be experiencing these kinds of more, I don't want to call them severe issues, I, I know of cases where people just can't like figure out how to brush their teeth anymore or can't figure out how to tie their shoes anymore. Or is that really a symptom that only typically manifests itself much farther down the line? Yeah, things like that basic. 
um, down the, the line, you'll notice those things. Yeah. But what we do, especially at Pleasant Trees, is you want to encourage people to keep doing what they're able to do. You mm -hmm. focus on their abilities rather than what they can't do and enhance their independence. Us as a society and caregivers sometimes create this excess disability, which means you're doing for that person yeah. where they could be doing for themselves. Yep. Yeah. And it makes them age in place longer if we enhance those abilities. That's really interesting because I know um, uh, fr from some of the other work that I, that I do, um, I find myself dealing with some dis straight disability issues. And in terms of building, this, this change that has occurred over the last 10 years where people used to think about re basically retrofitting something to take care of a disabled person as opposed to saying, no, this is really about so-called universal design. We're designing something so that whatever your issues are, right, you can still live there. It's, this is sounding really like, like this is really similar, that you're really trying to design a world, at least at Pleasantries, in which people can do all of the things that they can do, as opposed to just you're, you're thinking, oh my god, this person has Alzheimer's, they can't do anything anymore. It's right? a child. If you tie your child's shoe every day, they're not going to learn how. Right. Once they learn, they've got to keep doing it. If you start to do it again, you yeah. lose the task. You lose the ability to do it. So how do you deal with that with, I mean, I, I know if people think about, oh my God, my mom or my dad has got Alzheimer's, but to have folks in the early stages of Alzheimer's and you have how many people at the house? Like 10 to 14. 10 to 14. How do you deal, how do you do that? You just have right. fun. Yeah. You go with the flow. You be flexible. So, what kind of things um, would if I were if I were going to the for a day to pleasantries? What would I be doing? Engaging in socialization at the dinner table, where we all sit around and have a beautiful meal. Yeah. Um, doing um, all kinds of word games and um, puzzles and. Uh, all kinds of physical activity, but on a hominess basis, we yeah. go outside, we do gardening, we go for walks, we uh, have pet visits, we go on day trips, we go to museums. It's all about living I was just and giving say, them a better quality of life. And, and so, in the usual in the usual social day model, are these the same kinds of things that you would tend to see? Tend yeah, to the see difference the, of, the difference is that more of a medical model, you will see a larger population and more variety. Mm -hmm. The Pleasant Trees model is very um, small, mm -hmm. and they're able to develop relationships with each other, and they're very forgiving with each other. You know, yeah. they can tell a story. 20 times and it doesn't affect the other person so right. it's accepting right I always I would, I would tell clients you know one of the nice things about that group of people is that you know they can say do the same elephant joke a thousand times <laughs> and it's still kind of funny exactly. <laughs> right so that people can kind of be can be kind of being being comfortable in a place in which you can kind of it's almost like it, it, even with people with physical disabilities or people who are deaf or people who've got issues who may find it easier to socialize that way and hopefully down the road, we'll yeah. talk about how we do get into their world, those and, early and, stage folks. And, and that's the, the, amount, the time that we have. Thank you very, very much for tuning in. I hope that you have found this discussion helpful. Uh, we'll be following this up with a number of shows dealing with other aspects of dementia. In the next one, we'll be focusing on uh, later stage dementia and all of the things that are available to allow you to stay home, especially if it's you and your spouse and your spouse is still pretty okay, uh, how to stay home, what kind of supportive programs are there so that you can live your life at home. Thank you very much for tuning in and we'll talk to you next time.